Uh, and you're throwing in the bitterness hops first, your flavor hops second, and then right when you're done, you're throwing in your aroma hop. When you finish bo your boil, uh, you want to cool your beer as quickly as you possibly can. And what I do uh, to execute that is use a heat exchanger. And what is happening here is there are a ton of small, very thin little plates within this unit. And I'm pumping cold water from a cold liquor tank in one direction as I'm bringing out the 212 degree wort in the opposite direction. Uh, and so ultimately what you're wanting to do is get that beer cooled down to the temperature that you want to ferment at. So as I'm moving it from the heat exchanger, I'm pushing it into one of the four fermenters that I'm going to ferment in and we can take a look at that process next. Uh, depending upon what you're brewing, you know, let's just call it at 66 degrees, you add your yeast as you're moving that beer into this vessel. Um, you add your yeast in here, let it sit. The yeast is going to start eating up all that sugar and emitting either, well, well emitting two things, carbon dioxide and creating alcohol. Uh, so that's where you're getting uh, the alcohol in your beer. The yeast is eating the sugar, converting it into alcohol, and also putting off CO2. Once it's done fermenting, uh, whether it's a week, two weeks, three weeks, again, depending upon what beer you're making, I then transfer it from this unit using a portable pump into this vessel. Uh, this vessel is a bright beer tank. Uh, once it's in the bright beer tank, this is where I carbonate it by adding CO2. You use a centered stone is what it's called. It uh, <clears throat> basically has thousands of little holes in it and you're pumping CO2 through your beer under pressure at as cold a temperature as you possibly can so that the liquid will absorb the CO2. Once it's carbonated to uh, the level you want, you'll use a Zamenagel to test your uh, CO2 level to get it exactly where you want depending upon what style. From here I will bring out my kegs that are sitting in there and keg my beer. From there I will move the keg of beer in to uh, the walk-in cooler if you want to take a look. <laughs> Alright so as I said once I uh, carbonate the beer and have it kegged I bring it into this room uh, where I keg it. It's got two doors. It's got a door on this side so I can bring it in this way and then when I'm going to take it out of the brewery I go to the far side of the uh, cold room so that I can wheel it straight out onto my dock, onto my truck, to the retailer. Very cool, very cool. When I did start this process I obviously did do a lot of test batches and would have taste tests and things like that and ultimately the beer that people seem to kind of grasp onto was the Velvet Hammer, which is a 9% Imperial Red Ale. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, people seem to really love the name. They really responded to the flavor and taste of that beer. And when I was deciding, well, heck, what beer am I going to make at the brewery first? I thought, well, if my idea is to kind of let the public pick what my flagship is over time, I might as well let them pick what my first beer was or is going to be. And that's the Velvet Hammer. The thing I've noticed about the Dallas community is that there doesn't seem to be a lot of um, competition. It's, it's kind of a, it's almost like a, I would say a brotherhood, you know, with the different brewers and stuff. Have you, have you noticed that as well? well yeah, of course there's competition. We're both here in the same market, but the fact of the matter is this is still Bud Miller Coors country. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. We're battling those guys. We're trying to get those guys to realize that, look, it, do you want a beer with flavor or do you, do you want to continue drinking, you know, those products that don't have the same ingredient base that these do? And I want all the beer in Dallas to be good. I want it to be known as a place that uh, you can come and actually get some quality beer. I want there to be a reason to come to Dallas. Tell us about the first beer you ever had. Shoot, I'm from El Paso, Texas, and uh, we start drinking a little bit earlier in El Paso, Texas than most <laughs> folks do. I remember drinking Miller Lite out of my mom's fridge. I remember one weekend when she took off and we drank, you know, like a case of beer between me and all my friends that weekend. And then we're on Sunday trying to figure out how we were going to replace all the beer that was gone. Um, well, thank you so much, Michael. We absolutely. really enjoyed coming and out and talking to you, finally. Love it. <laughs> anytime. You're welcome at any time. You just let me know. All right. Thank you. You bet. And until next time, see you all next Wednesday.